I got a crazy question. Why are these strange colors? Um, just so you can, so they're easier to identify. Oh, from okay. The next. Yeah, they just stagger gray, red, gray, red. Well, they were all gray, and now, or they were yellow. Now they're pink. Jason, do you have enough slack on that to um, hit this fader down so that I can switch the um, house lights? I just want to try to make a smooth, a smooth transition. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it. Okay, cool. So yeah, just dial me up to like 12 o'clock, my clients down. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, just take the picture out. Sub 31. Is that what you want to do? Yes, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much for coming and enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> 
We went from the San Francisco Bay Area to the Tampa Bay Area. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with the difference between those two places, let me help you out. Very simple. The San Francisco Bay Area is full of people eating brie with crackers. The Tampa Bay Area is full of crackers who named their daughters Brie. <laughs> A lot of history in New Jersey. Uh, did you catch the mural on the way in? The stars of the Garden State. Let's run down the list, shall we? Let's think about it. We had Bond and Jovi. Uh, you had Susan Sarandon. If she lived through Chernobyl, big head, way too big. Body, very small. I don't know what's going on there. You have um, John Travolta. If he suffered mild dioxin poisoning or was being played by a mid-career Mickey Rourke. Uh, who else did you have on there? Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, uh, who else? Joe Pesci. Who? Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci in like 30 years. Um, Meryl Streep doing her best acting job, pretending to be happy to be part of that mural. Um, Iced tea. Iced tea, delicious. You also had Michael Douglas. Looked like he was stealing Danny DeVito's wallet. Um, notably missing from the uh, mural, <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Yeah. And Whitney Houston. Yeah. But don't worry, you still got Tony Braxton and Frankie Muniz. They're both, who else? Uh, Bruce is there. No, Bruce is there, but Frank Sinatra's not. <laughs> They're working on it. And the Chris Christie one, they need a bigger wall. So that's, it's an old joke, it's an old joke. All right, so, um, you know, I gotta tell you, people are very friendly here in, in New Jersey. I mean, we, you know, we're based in New York, but they, I mean, people in New York City, not the friendliest, but you come over to New Jersey, suddenly everyone is very friendly. For example, earlier, earlier today I was, um, I was at the ATM taking out some cash, and the guy in line behind me goes, hey, we got this same pin call. <laughs> it's big, nice big, very nice big. Uh, I did see, uh, I did see one weird thing in town today. Um, I saw a guy uh, with a Ferrari backpack. <laughs> Nothing says I don't own a Ferrari. Going <laughs> like a Ferrari backpack, you know what I'm saying? It's my writer right there in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I am not out here alone tonight, and thank goodness for that, because joining me on this stage, making up every note of the music you have heard and will hear, please say hello to my good friend, Mr. Angelo DiLoretto! <laughs> so talented, this one. See, it's like Dave Brubeck had a baby with Stanley Tucci. Um, <laughs> every time I hear him play, I'm overcome with crippling penis envy. Um, uh, always a bit of a room split in that one, always a bit of a gamble. Okay, folks, uh, would you like me to break down the show before we tell you how this thing works? Yeah. All right, let me break it down for a real deep place. So have you heard of the Tony Awards? Yes. Well, this is not them. No, 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 my friends, because you have the great privilege and honor of being in attendance tonight at the 181st Annual Phony Awards. That's right, my friends. Tonight you will be hearing four nominated songs from this year's best and brightest Broadway musicals. I'm talking about the classics of tomorrow. Such irresistible earworms, like, you know what the songs I'm talking about? Songs like, Christine Goes to Las Vegas Alone. Just missed. It was a snub. It was a phony snub. Now, the songs you hear tonight will be presented by four New York City improvisers. And believe me when I tell you, three of them are very good. Now, after you've heard all four nominated songs, you, my friends, will be voting to decide which of our nominees takes home that coveted phony award and wins the ultimate prize of seeing that song turned into a full-blown improvised musical in the second half of our show. Does that sound like fun to you, people? Before I bring out our first presenter, one last order of business. This is very important. Everything you see on this stage tonight is completely based on your suggestions and your suggestions alone. So remember, if anything isn't funny, it's probably your fault. Alright, are you ready for your first presenter of the year? I'm so excited to be here. Oh, not only one of the bright stars. 
stars lighting up Broadway today. But he's also got a heart of gold. That's right, because after this show tonight, he's actually going to be going over to entertain the troops. Let's let him hear it. That's great. That's right, he's been booked to perform at the Middlesex County Royal Scout Jamboree. Ladies and gentlemen, please lose your minds for Jeff Shiro. something out right at the start. I grew up in New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, all states that are very mean to New Jersey. So I've heard a lot of New Jersey jokes, but here's my secret that I'm coming out of the closet. The very first place I lived in when I was a little baby, Edison, New Jersey. I've come home, and I, I should have known that I was a, a native New Jersey person uh, all along because, man, I could not drive through Pennsylvania. They drive so slow. <laughs> I just want to be on that turnpike just, <laughs> just going and past every. Oh, I love it so much. Anyways, road rage aside, uh, I have to tell you that I am very, very honored to present this nominated song, uh, which has made me famous, of course. Uh, it has become already my personal, uh, you know, theme music. It's what I sing to my kids when they go to sleep. Daddy, Daddy, will you pretty please sing that song to us? And of course, you all know the song that I'm talking about, which is, of course, Love in the Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> My personal favorite. It's everybody, Jeff Love in the Zombie Apocalypse Shearer, they call me. Yes, uh, Love in the Zombie Apocalypse um, comes from the, uh, the musical The Fortune Teller. Uh, and The Fortune Teller uh, is, uh, as you would guess, uh, it's, a, it's a musical about telling the future and the ideas that there is something that we are very scared of that's going to happen in the future, and well, what do we do when we're faced with a scary future? Now, in this musical uh, 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 called The Fortune Teller, I play uh, a young, handsome, devastatingly handsome man. Um, he's very thin and svelte, uh, and, um, and he uh, goes to a fortune teller to see what's going to happen to him, and he starts getting some crazy, crazy uh, deliveries of what he's going to do, uh, what's going to happen to him. Um, and in finding this out, uh, he realizes, he tries to convince his girlfriend, who is very scared about hearing these terrible things that are going to happen, he tries to convince her that no matter what happens in his future, he's with her all along. So, and that is the scene, of course, where you hear the song, Love in the Zombie Apocalypse, from the musical, The Fortune Teller. Look. It must be true. The 
fortune teller said a lot of things that are that might that might happen to me. She didn't say it was said in the future, but she did say that I should be ready for these things. And I don't want you to run scared away from me. Uh, I see. I, was, I, I think I should though. I mean, like I feel like I'm running. I gotta start running. If you're Jenny, Jenny, you, you can't. You can't go. I, I, I'm facing a lot of things. There's, apparently there's going to be an asteroid strike and, and zombies. Well, how long until the asteroid strike did she say? She said give or take somewhere between three months and ten years. <laughs> I'm going to go. Stay with me. Yeah, uh, yes? We're out of the chicken. <laughs> did you hear that sound? Is there... If you, no. Is, we're, we're actually just going to take the check. We're just going to take the check and go. There is no check. There is no go. <laughs> I'm just going to ask you this straight out. Are you a zombie? No, I'm just emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> if that asteroid striking now, I mean, there's got to be if, a if I'm short of an asteroid strike, we wouldn't, this restaurant would not be standing. There would be like Armageddon. It's, 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 look, this is probably not going to happen, right? We knew that there were going to be rough times. Uh, you know, when we got engaged, we, we said, like, hey, you know, uh, we're going to be saved for better or for worse, and, and, and maybe it won't be worse, but I want you to be there by my side. Well, you're really going to have to convince me with this one. Folks, I'm very excited to tell you that this 
is a nominated duet. It happens very rarely at the Phony Awards, but it's coming to this year. And uh, let me tell you about it. So Rob Schiffman, oh, you just saw him. Oh, he's dazzled audiences up and down Broadway. Uh, he is truly the uh, the Michael Jordan of Broadway musicals. If uh, I'm referring, of course, to the time Michael Jordan briefly played baseball. And uh, Mallory Kinney, what can we say? I mean, uh, I think Andrew Lloyd Webber said it best. When Broadway legend Andrew Lloyd Webber looked at Mallory and said, You know, I think I will have the risotto. Ladies and gentlemen, please! Phony Award. It's true. Uh, hopefully this time is the win. Five times, always lost. <laughs> nice and big chance. But of course we've got the song of dreams, don't we? Oh, we absolutely do. And that song is? A Glass of Juice. <laughs> you all know it. Sure. A Glass of Juice <laughs> comes from the musical The the most boring date ever. <laughs> the most boring date ever tells uh, the story of a woman who is looking for love. And uh, she goes on a series of dates with men who just, they don't excite her, there's nothing fun about them, they're very basic. And uh, until she finally meets uh, the man of her dreams, but he comes with a challenge as well. And of course, the scene in which the song A Glass of Juice takes place. Oh, yes. Uh, the scene in which the, the, the song takes place uh, is when she obviously has realized she's met the man of her dreams. Uh, and it's their first date that she realizes it. There's something a little bit different about this date. So, ladies and gentlemen, won't you please travel down the road of love with us as we take you to the song A Glass of Juice from the musical The Most Boring Date. It's very neutral. I choose not to paint the walls. I feel that's limiting the walls. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, right. some people go for a splash of color, but this is just, it's all the same. It's exactly the same. Also, my bed linens are the same color. My clothes are all the same color as the walls. Oh, Nigel! And oh, my sweet son! Sabrina, my mother. This is Sabrina, my mother. <laughs> Most important moment in your life. Well, unless I meet someone new, you never know. 
Anyway, I made some pasta. I made the ones that are curly. You know what they're called? What? I was I hoping you knew. <laughs> Song. 
song, a song which each and every time I sing it feels like the very first time. And of course that song is... Mm. No, no, thank you. Uh, never Ending Traffic. Never Ending Traffic comes to us from the musical <laughs> The Finish Line. And the musical The Finish Line is a musical of, of, uh, of winning, of, of racing and winning. Uh, it's, uh, the finish line tells the story. It's actually a NASCAR story. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it takes place in uh, the South, the South where uh, the NASCAR races are raced. We don't have to get specific where that is. <laughs> we all know. We don't have to talk about it. And it's basically the story of, uh, you know, one of the NASCAR, the, the, the races, and how everybody attends and everything. And this uh, one uh, woman is the daughter of one of the like very, very famous uh, NASCAR races who is going to be racing in this particular upcoming race. And right before he falls ill, like a little while before he falls ill, and it's, you know, people are thinking, well, that's it for, for their car and their sponsors. But the daughter who has, you know, watched and, and been part of the pit crew and watched and everything, she believes that she can win that race and, and you know, drive the car and win for her father and for everything. Everything is on the line for this race. And so it's the story of how she is opposed and ultimately she convinces people to let her drive the car and, you know, I'm not going to tell you how it turns out. Uh, now, in this song, Never Ending Traffic, this is the song that I sing. And ladies and gentlemen, if, if you couldn't tell, I play this daughter, okay? And uh, this is the song I sing when I am in the car. And I am trying to get to that finish line. I mean, we are like racing and going around and it just seems like extra cars are being added to the NASCAR race. They're not even actually racing. They're just from regular, you know, from the freeway, from the highway. And so it's incredibly frustrating. And so this is kind of um, a song that I'm singing about my frustration, but sort of to myself, but as the other drivers are passing me and going past me and I'm going past them. <sighs> now, clearly, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough. <laughs> but is it? I think not. Because one of the things that made this musical so memorable, honestly, was the way the actors used their bodies on stage, their arms, their legs, the dance, if you will. And in the industry, we call this choreography. <laughs> You're welcome. And what I discovered tonight on the red carpet is, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this is fascinating. The choreographer of the musical, The Finish Line, is here tonight at the Phony Awards. They came all the way to Avenel, New Jersey, I know.
know you're going to do me good. I'm sorry I couldn't be driving. But oh. After that accident I had when I rolled over 48 times and they had to replace my foot with a quarter of my brain. Oh. And then my kneecap is somewhere in my elbow. Pops, it's just not able to do anything. I would climb out of this car and give you a big hug, but I can't because I'm strapped no, in. You're all strapped in. There's so many. There's, of course, as we know, all the all the very technical seatbelts and stuff that are on you right now. Right. I don't need to say what they are. No, no, we all know. We yeah. don't need to get real specific, kind of all right. Now, if you just remember, you got to see that whole lane like it's clear, all right? Same. You got to always see that way through. Cars. Yeah. This is going to be like a glowing path, and you're just going to follow it no matter what happens. Exactly. And I'm going to be here on my radio for you. Yeah, Papi, you, you said it's biblical. It's almost like the parting of the Red Part Seas. The Red it's Seas. the parting of the cars. Yes, yeah. yep. That's all you got to do is just. You just gotta pray to your maker that they, he parts it, he lets you part that red sea of cars. I'm gonna do it, Pa. I'm gonna do it for you and for me and for Mom. My <laughs> right. All right. All right. I'm gonna give you a push. I'm gonna give you a push. You're gonna give me a push? That's funny. I ain't gonna give you a push. All right. All right. You ready? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I assume we can start whenever we want to. Okay. I'm on radio. Listen to this!
is so look forward to any time comedy improv actors are asked to talk about cars. Uh, what was the line exactly? All those fancy technical seatbelts straps? Folks, that's the sound of a New Yorker desperately trying to connect with rural America. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is of course the, uh, the Phony Awards. This is the main event. Uh, and of course, we, we uh, decided to have it in Athenel, uh, given that it is the show business capital of the New York metropolitan area. Uh, but I would be remiss if I did not mention that uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, we did hold our technical awards luncheon. Uh, it, was, it was graciously hosted um, by the good folks over at the, uh, the Doubletree Hotel in Teaneck. Uh, it was held in Ballroom B. Um, Ballroom B was occupied by um, traffic school, I believe. Um, but a couple of quick highlights from the uh, technical awards, if you're interested. A um, couple of just little... Um, Joy plus Pat to the world. Uh, plus Pat, by the way, in parentheses, uh, one for best punctuation. It was uh, very competitive this year. Close, close race. Um, we need more boy bands. Uh, won the uh, 2019 award for achievements. If you could not be more wrong. Uh, and uh, we're we're painting. Oh, we're paint. We're painting the what? This one won for best penmanship, let's just <laughs> say that. And of course, once again, the Avenel Performing Arts Center won uh, the award for best props. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. That is a list of some of the nominees. from you, by the way, when you have great song title suggestions. We want to hear from you online, okay? So after the show, you're going to go online, you're going to get on Twitter, you're going to get on Facebook and, uh, and Instagram, uh, you're going to get on uh, AOL and uh, Ask Jeeves and MySpace and, and LiveJournal and your uh, webcam, whatever you use to interact with the world, uh, you're going to punch in hashtag phony awards. Okay, we're talking about us on social media. And if you don't know what a hashtag is, that's okay. Just visit our website, broadwaysnexthitmusical.com. And if you don't know what a website is, <laughs> well, then I salute you for your service in the Second World War. <laughs> All right, folks, are you ready for our fourth presenter of the evening? Uh, all, if, listen, if he wins this phony award tonight, all he needs is an Emmy, a Grammy, and an Oscar, and a Tony to achieve legendary PGOT status. Folks, please give it up for Rob Schiffman! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, what an honor to be nominated twice this evening, once with inevitable Mallory Kinney and once alone. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so honored because every now and then a song comes along that changes the world. Changes the way we see ourselves and the way we choose to interact with those around us. It's extremely unlikely that this is one of those songs. <laughs> but then in the long line of musical theater classics such as Summertime and Sing in the Rain comes this new classic. I know you know the song, speaking of, of course, is Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. <laughs> Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman comes from the musical Therapy. Therapy is, um, it's the story, <laughs> it's the story of, of a marriage that is falling apart. <laughs> and, um, it's about, um, how, uh, it's, it's, but the, the, the problem is, it's, it's the secrets that are being kept, um, by each 
person in the marriage. And, um, and it's how, when the truth comes out, finally they're able to reconnect. Um, the secret that my character plays, I'm the husband in this relationship, is that I am a supernatural creature. Um, and this is, um, this, the scene in which I sing the song Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, uh, this is me uh, in therapy with my therapist trying to communicate, speaking through my truth, which eventually I will have to tell my partner and, and, and uh, hopefully be able to reconnect. Now, the thing about the musical therapy that really uh, connected with the critics, other than the obvious social relevance, was the lyrics. The lyrics to this musical were groundbreaking. This was the first musical to ever use adverbs. <laughs> So now we weren't just growing, but we were growing emotionally. <laughs> That's a big deal when you're in therapy. Now, uh, there was one lyric in particular that every time I sang it, you know, it was just like truth and wisdom. And it was like, if Sondheim and Shakespeare got together and had a baby, they might have been this very lyric. And uh, you, there was, that, that, you know what lyric I'm talking about. There was this one lyric that just, it, it, it spoke to all of us. It was, it, people were tattooing it on themselves, Tweeting it, that lyric, of course, being <laughs> the totally appropriate to this song, Alzheimer, Alzheimer's makes new friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alzheimer's makes new friends. Ladies and gentlemen, won't you come down the path of marital bliss? As I present to you the song, Frankenstein meets the Okay. 
it's not. You know who you are. I don't want to say it! Wait a minute. I will roleplay your wife. Weird! Uh, but I have a whole, I have a whole wing closet for this. She's a lot, right? Yeah! You have costume for when you roleplay? Doesn't everyone? Hey, you're a Frankenstein werewolf! All right, all right. Don't call me weird! You look just like him. Do I? <laughs> it's uncanny. All right. I can do it. Is there something you have to tell me? And you seem so upset, like there's so distant. I just see you staring out of the, the window at the moon.
William Shakespeare and the late great William Shatner, all spinning in their graves with jealousy. Oh, Shatner's still with us. I, uh, I didn't know. I thought we uh, lost a lot of people last year. Speaker, he was one of them. Surprise is not on the mural. Okay, folks, it is time. It is time to vote. It's time to vote and decide which of these incredible nominated songs wins that coveted phony award. So, if you would please uh, retrieve from under your seats the electronic voting device. One guy, okay. Uh, we actually don't have that. Uh, we're gonna do this, uh, we're actors, okay? We're gonna pay check and pay check and applause break to applause break. So we'll do it by clapping. Uh, let's do a quick test run here. If you heard a song that you liked, uh, that you didn't love, you wanna give it you know, some respect, Give me like a nice, light, polite golf clap. And I'm familiar with the concept of applause. Okay, that was nice. That was, one, one more time, can I just, just... Very good, very good. Like when I first came out here tonight. Okay, and then, if you heard a song that you loved, and that's your winner, give me all you got! That was enjoyable and a little violent. Okay. something in Avenue. <laughs> yeah. 
That's why really it's a big deal. And so many musicals have been written about you know, dysfunctional marriage and, and how that cross-pollinates with demonic possession and things like that. Um, but finally, one is recognized tonight, and that's because of your wisdom and your fortitude. So I thank you. I must say, though, this is a bit of a hollow victory for me. Uh, I want to dedicate this award to my father. My mother died uh, <coughs> ten years before I was born, and I never got to. <laughs> never got to meet him. But Dad died at the hands of a werewolf. And, uh, or that was the rumor. And, uh, and, uh, I just wish he was here to see this, but you know who is here? The writer. The writer of that incredible title, Frankenstein Meets the Werewolf, or Frankenstein Meets the Werewolf? I think that's what it was. Uh, 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 where are you? Get the lights up for a moment if we can see. Where are you, writer? Are you here? Right there? There's our writer. Ladies and gentlemen, the writer! Okay. Absolutely. I see the entertainer from the 